Welcome to Between Two Pastries. This is Nicole. Hey everyone, it's Annie. Today we have the one and only Miss Abby Langer joining us yet again. Third pod with us. Thank you, Abby, because Mm -hmm. we love you so much. Um, And I happen to have just stumbled upon... um, Sometimes like some of your stuff pops up in like my feed and what have you, or sometimes I'll just kind of, I'm not stalking you, I promise. Um, (laughs) But on the occasion, like something will pop up with you and it's like, it just seems like it's always so timely. And I think I saw you specifically doing, I think it was some dumb TikTok influencer who was just like, if you can just, just, just suppress your hunger long enough yeah. and it's Heidi Powell. Heidi do you Powell. remember? Her? Okay, good. You yeah, remember. I, I have two videos about her. I'm like pu- pulling up my Instagram now because I, yeah, um, she's really toxic. Like, it's yeah, bad. really yeah, bad. It's gross. Yeah. And so I oh, was like God. listening to her and then, um, you know, I was just like, oh my gosh. And I think I, you know, Annie and I just, are, we talk about this, I feel like constantly, but you know, it's just, it's so upsetting. It makes me so sad that these people, again, just have this influence over so many. And it's yeah. just this horrible mind stuff. So, yeah. The problem with Heidi Powell is that she, I mean, in in my latest video, she said, she talks about like, like how um, you don't have integrity and that's why you can't lose weight. People who can't lose oh. weight don't have integrity. She makes what? things for a person's, like a person's personality about a person's values and, and judges people. Like, what do you think about people who are in in larger bodies than Heidi? Like, mm-hmm. are they just like, do they just lack integrity if it's like a moral failing? Um, and uh, of course she probably does think that. And then the other um, video that I did with her it, in it is that she's like um here's how you suppress your hunger and then she gives yes, some that was the one it, yes it, it, it's just like what do you, food that's how you suppress your hunger mm-hmm. your hunger is this from your body but like eating. yeah like food is the best appetite suppressant um but it's so incredibly toxic when um people come out and 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 make um make food and eating into some measure of a person's morality um and their integrity and um and and it makes people feel like shit and the whole thing is also like i'm seeing and she's one of these people too um this tough love approach that like yes. never works yeah. research says it doesn't work you know shaming people into oh, lo- no. losing <laughs> weight it <laughs> doesn't fucking work mm-hmm. and, and yet there are so and in, in on tiktok in particular there's all these like bros and like you know flat shaming whoever's who have no qualifications right and they're just like you know you're fat and you know you're a terrible person because of it and you just need to buckle down and you need motivation it's like that doesn't work it just yeah. is it's compounding the problem and it's actually so it's so awful. Like who would it's ever super awful. Mm-hmm. It's really, it's so, it's so awful. Yeah. Um, and so these people are just so incredibly toxic and in the common denominator among them is that they're not qualified to be giving oh. advice to anybody. Well, 100%. One hundred percent. Like Heidi Powell has a history of an eating disorder. She's mm. clearly engaging in disordered sure. um, behaviors. Um, you know whether or not she wants to admit it on her Instagram. Like, why are people taking her seriously? Like, this is a person with a problem. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it, it yet she's yeah. got a half a million followers. I mean, it, yeah. just on Instagram alone. Like, I just. I don't understand how people buy it. I mean, people why do people it. want to not eat? Because they you know what I mean? Be- when, when we're proposing a solution of eating and potentially having weight loss and you right. things, you don't want to do that. You want to do the self-harm martyr route. Yeah, yeah because they're told that um, suffering is ideal when the um, right. end result is weight loss. That right. of you course. can't 
for water fasting for three or four days. Oh, yeah. That you get a gold star for losing weight, no matter what the cost, physical, emotional, you know, whatever. Um, that's great. We've that is the message that we have received. And, uh, you know, as women, in particular, women um, now in middle age, we're yeah. getting that it's like really problematic but um but we all as women we've received that messaging since we were born right absolutely I mean, that men aren't affected by it they are increasingly affected by it but we are three women talking and and I just feel like fuck, you know it's out of control and yeah. people are it's it's harmful right it's so harmful yeah Go ahead, yeah Go ahead. no I mean there there's there's two things. Um, we were talking before you you had popped on too, and we were just both thinking like, it's so toxic. Like how <laughs> how can you stand? <laughs> you know, do you, you know what I'm saying? Like just like oh my gosh, being so submerged in that like yeah. every day. I did. Someone posted something. Um, I think it was James Coppola posted some woman oh it's that carnivore woman with the yellow glasses and she was like look what they're selling in the grocery store you know it's toxic food but and she and she's saying all of this stuff like she's bloviating her hot garbage bullshit while she's having a meal with people mm. and i wrote in the comments like can you imagine even being in the same room with this person let alone sharing a meal with her at, when she's talking like it's so disgusting it's so off-putting it's so like she's like building herself up with disorder mm -hmm. and shitting all over people yeah. who you know are 99% who can uh, the 99% who can't afford grass-fed butter and organic oh gosh beef and you know all that stuff it's elitist and disgusting and it, it, it's just like there's that whole big problem like it's a huge pervasive issue and even you know it's 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 not even a lot of the time it's not even spoken it's implied like mm -hmm. so we get it from all different angles it's you brought so up awesome. a point before that you know as women were affected so much by this um and men are too but i think it's a little less and i want to bring up yeah. um a particular individual nicole and i've chatted about his books before um but david goggins i don't know if you're familiar with i've heard of, of him but i have yeah. not oh i don't even he have doesn't him. he doesn't get into <laughs> um nutrition necessarily but he plays this like stay hard and be disciplined and you are you are a waste of space unless you are disciplined enough to do it. And I think men in particular hear that messaging, right? And it's, again, it, it just, it's, it goes in line with this. If I guilt people, if I shame people, if right. I make them feel like they're less of a human, mm -hmm. uh, question their integrity and their morals because of yeah. food and exercise, now they will end up shame, uh, changing. And it's, it's just so um, remarkable how how people fall in line with that. And I'm curious, yeah. um, men or women, because I think we hear the same messaging with a slight twist, of course, right. um, depending on gender. But what it, what kind of backlash do you get? Like, do you ever hear anything back from Heidi? Or is she just like, mm, whatever, I don't care about it. She actually me. blocked me. <laughs> yeah. she really... I can't believe it. I was like, what? Um, no, I don't hear back from any of them, like Mark okay. Hyman, Heidi, like Dave Asprey, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they just block me. They don't care. Um, it's probably not even them. It's probably their assistant. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. they don't, they don't actually want to hear uh -uh. other perspectives. Uh -uh. Just oh, of course not. And they, even someone in my comments on the Heidi post said, I hope she, watches this um and makes like it, it changes her attitude and i'm like there's absolutely zero there's like a negative chance that she's gonna mm -hmm. do that yeah and there's you no know? benefit to her there's well, no benefit for her to do that so strong. no benefit whatsoever everyone's building her up absolutely um, surrounded by people like in this echo chamber who are like patting her on the back oh you're so great you're so um yeah it's not gonna happen it's gross no it's, it, again it's so toxic and dysfunctional and distorted yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How, how can you not know that you're living in your eating disorder when you've had yeah. that? Like, I mean, every eating disorder patient I've ever worked with 
yes, there, there's probably an initial time where they're, they're so like, no, I'm, this is normal. Yeah, and, right. and once they learn that this is an eating disorder, you know, what's disordered at that point, whether you're <laughs> yeah. choosing to engage. I think in it she not. just chooses not to acknowledge it because she's yeah. making money from it. Oh so yeah. She, it's she has working the ability for to her. Help mm -hmm. people and chooses not to. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. this is working for her. Right. right, right. Uh, and it's sad. Like I feel she was like on a podcast on, her, she has something recently mm -hmm. on her feed that where she's on a podcast talking about eating disorders. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what the hell? Like there's what? like, either there's absolutely no insight whatsoever, which, you know, is possible, possible. or you're just willfully ignoring it. Right. But either oh, is yeah. bad. And I, and it's bad for her, right? It's harmful, yeah. you know, regardless of the harm that these people are doing to others, there, she is also struggling, uh, clearly struggling. Mm -hmm. And as health professionals, we have to approach that from a, a, a like a side of compassion, right? And be like, you know what, this person is sick. They don't know what they're doing or they're, you know, so deep into it that this is what we're getting. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we have to acknowledge it at least while we say, fuck her, she, you know, like this is so harmful. How could she do that? Yeah. Well, kudos to you for doing that because I, I can't imagine the strain <laughs> that it would put on so many people to you know, look into these influencers and research them and, and to just kind of have that back and forth and, you know, it's let really, them know. like stressful actually, you know, um, and you'll notice that like my Instagram, I I'm not posting as much. I might post like twice a week. I just, well, I'm so busy right now. I'm writing a book proposal and I'm mm -hmm. like rewriting and rebranding my entire course. And it's like, was supposed to be out this week. And I'm, not finished um and my daughter plays competitive hockey and I just like been it <laughs> she she plays for a team that's an hour away so like oh gosh for at nice. least four times a week I'm like just like oh my god so um but the the whole thing is like the Instagram videos not only are do they take a while to do but it's also like I sometimes just don't have the bandwidth to mm -hmm. look at. people send me all these things and I'm like I can't no. even see like my mm -hmm. mental health like I can't fucking watch this because it's so bad. Mm -hmm. you know? and well, and it's it, imagine. I mean, that's all this. The, all the stuff that you're being sent, people are seeing, not just one person, but like mm -hmm. people. And I that's know. that. I think is the heartbreaking part. Is like, I mean, great. There's one person who realizes this is wrong. Let's send it over to you know get out on someone's social media who has a platform to do the right, right. thing. But like people that just so many people are seeing it, and it's it's. And I believe like reading the comments on these posts, it's like, holy crap, mm -hmm. uh, really disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> really well, disturbing. it is disturbing, but there's a lot of sick people in our world, unfortunately. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's like, I just think, you know, the messaging, it has become so messed up and our, um, there's no checks and balances. There's so much misinformation no. and mm -hmm. anybody can go online and just say, like, look at who was speaking about food and nutrition in front of Congress. Mm -hmm. Julian Michaels, oh, Mark Schman, fucking food babe. What mm -hmm. are these our experts now? Like they, we're in the post-truth era. That to me is so disturbing. That's one of the last things I saw last night before I, put my phone on my bedside table and was like, I can't do this anymore. Cause that, but that is the reality of the situation. And so we're getting these, this, all this horrible information from these so-called experts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here we are. Well, I mean, right. I, I'm sure you saw the, the, was it the New York times that put out basically discrediting dietitians and, yeah. you know, I mean, it was, it was like, I just sat there and was like, Oh my God. Like you have no idea the amount of work that right. we've done like, I know. and it's what we true. actually do. Like we're not lunch ladies. We're not <laughs> telling people calories in calories out. I mean, maybe there are some shitty dietitians out there. Absolutely. There's but always shitty everywhere. Yeah. Right. Every yes. Profession. Right. 100%. Are you talking about the one where they were like, it's, it wasn't the Washington post article about dietitians working with industry it was the latest one with mark hyman like did a yes. uh, yes. you know, process ultra processed foods and stuff yes. 
like god forbid dietitians should not vilify foods and god forbid we should um speak with nuance mm -hmm. and with inclusivity around right. food and 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 food. yeah that we're like with the industry we're yeah. with automatically big, we're like yeah. paying, paying big paying industry prices, which is so ridiculous and um it's so unfair it um, is is there it, anything it, it, wrong with craft no i have no i have no stake in the game of what craft puts out there or whatever if it's processed or not processed it doesn't like I don't, I, I I don't know if they think dietitians think of these things all the time and like our stakes at with with these big companies, but like that's not how we operate. And, and, no. and like no no dietitian in the entire world is telling people to make ultra processed foods the mainstay the of core. their core. <laughs> Correct. Right. Correct. Like all we're saying is ultra processed foods can fit into a healthy diet. They're yeah. delicious. They're convenient. They're cost yeah. effective. You know, a lot of them are shelf stable and mm -hmm. it doesn't all have to be fucking salads and chicken right. breast, you, right. you know, so, but it, 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 I just noticed that like you, people go from zero to a hundred in two milliseconds. It's like yes. either we're not eating any, any ultra processed food at all, or suddenly dietitians are like, yeah, it's okay to eat ultra processed food, but suddenly we're rec apparently we're recommending pop tarts for like every meal. Like, no, that's not what's happening. <laughs> right. Like, well, and people are people are misinterpreting too, right? Like, I mean, as sports dietitians, we may recommend a pop tart in particular situations. If you have ulcer ulcerative colitis, we may recommend a pop tart in certain situations. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like there's there's a time and a place for everything. If I don't want someone to binge at Halloween time, we're going to work on making sure we know how to eat candy. Absolutely. In a, in a way yeah, that yeah. doesn't allow for binging, which means you're eating processed food or candy or sugar or carbs or however you want to vilify it. Yeah, right. My daughter's going to drink the blue Gatorade before <laughs> she gets in the net because you know what? She like, that's mm -hmm. what she we wants. Just talked about that. We, we literally did. just recorded like a pod blue. on that. Yeah. And um, yeah, the blue and the red are her favorite. Yeah. And you they know, don't cause autism. They don't cause ADHD. They yes. Don't oh, God. Any of these weird claims. They're are highly high. functional. They're, They're highly functional, functional and supportive food. to a sport. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's just... I mean, and I spoke to her hockey team and there, and I'm like, yeah, Gatorade is actually the best. Thank well, you. That's exactly. Powerade and Gatorade are the only two that I would recommend for during the game because they have carbs, right? And the right ratio. But people <laughs> get all hung up. Oh, you should make your own sports drink because, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, fuck off. Like, you know what? She's a competitive double A goalie. She doesn't get out of the net like for what? Like an hour and a half. She's going to freaking take what she gets and mm -hmm. she, what she likes and what helps her. Because mm -hmm. like, that's it. And it's just like, people are so, they like drill. The, uh, it's like, they pick right. on everything. Everyone's a, con a contrarian at this point, it seems yeah. like. Yeah. In particular in the clicks. field of nutrition. Yeah. It yeah. Gets the clicks. That's all yeah. they care about. Like, look at, look at TikTok. Mm -hmm. that, there's these people who are like total idiots mm -hmm. and but they have so many followers and and they that's why is because they like are contrarians they're harsh they are extreme but they're addicted to that they're addicted to the followers and the attention do you notice oh, yeah do you notice with your high schoolers because I experienced this with my stepdaughter who's now in college with TikTok, as it relates to nutrition, she would sometimes be like, oh, I saw, you know, blah, blah, blah on TikTok. How do you, what do you think about that? And like, mm -hmm. she would inquire knowing I'm a dietitian, but like, there was a level of disbelief of what I was saying. Yes. Because yeah, no, I wasn't on TikTok. I don't think that. I don't oh, get I it. was so lucky. Because like, I, my kids, like, I mean, I, I'm just, they know better. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just I raise them like first to not believe anything they see on social media, but also they Good. you know what? It's like they know um they've they've just seen my example for their entire lives. So they know nice. that, like you know, if they eat Nutella three day, you know, three meals a day, they're gonna feel like shit and they should balance their meals. Do they ever like always do it no of course no not. they're kids right. 
not. But I didn't they either. Know, they know when people are talking shit. I, I, yeah. I'm hoping they don't come to me and say, I think they don't watch a lot of nutrition content on TikTok because they know they get it. They get it enough. Yeah. Right. Like, oh. <laughs> right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, protein. That's so great because teenagers are so impacted by TikTok. Oh, it's, it's scary. Well, yeah, I'm not saying terrible. they're not impacted by it. I mean, they may be impacted by like the body image stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just the nutrition part they're not. But I, I, I do worry about what they see on social media, and I do try to be like, this isn't real life. Like this person right. has. But they can see it. Life. Therefore, it is real life. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, I can talk till I'm blue in the face, but you know, they see it mm -hmm. every day, right? And mm -hmm. it's scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's there's an element where there's always going to be stuff that we can't control. So we need to just raise them the way we see best and hope that they get through it. <laughs> <laughs> women too like we see yeah. it with other women like again like I'm talking a lot about midlife menopause perimenopause because um I'm that's what my book proposal is about and that's what my course mm -hmm. is about and it's like and I am in menopause I'm turning 52 in December mm -hmm. um and you know it's like we are such targets and we see these women you know what I eat in a day and oh look at me I'm 55 and I'm in a bikini and it's like those images are burned into midlife women in midlife's brains like mm -hmm. as ideal and you know as it as if it's so achievable and so mm -hmm. simple and it's actually so not so mm -hmm. uh, it's not only teens it's actually adult women and um it's so an eating disorder is in midlife go mm -hmm. skyrocket mm -hmm. right? yes because of this your body's changing you're like what the hell I don't recognize myself when I look in the mirror yeah. oh but this person on TikTok or Instagram she's older than me and she's had more kids than me why is she in a bikini and she weighs like 30 pounds less mm -hmm. oh. it's, it's draining so it, ladies yeah. never ends it just never ends. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So because we just kind of like blew right into the podcast because we're all angry. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> for those, <laughs> we're just like, wow. Um, <laughs> for those who may be new listeners for us, um, Abby, do you just want to kind of introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. So um, my name is Abby Langer. I'm a registered dietitian. I've been a dietitian for 25 years. I'm based in Toronto and my company is Abby Langer Nutrition. You can find me on Instagram at Langer Nutrition, on Facebook at Abby Langer Nutrition, um, and online at abbylangernutrition.com. I see one-to-one -one clients. I have um, an a new upcoming course um, that you'll be able to find on my website. And yeah. And I'm just passionate about debunking nutrition myths, food equity, and um, yeah, taking down nutrition scammers because there I are love just it. way too many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And how do you honestly find time to like juggle all of that? You know what I mean? How do you have yeah, the like, so day off. like it's so hard. Um, I don't know. I just, I, and I have to work out and make and go grocery. Shop. Like it's just, yeah, crazy. you have to be a human. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, I, I'm so lucky for so long. I worked for somebody else. And, mm -hmm. you know, in 2000, the end of 2017, I quit my job like at the hospital or in the clinic. And then it's just, I've never looked back because mm -hmm. the quality of life is way better, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I enjoy what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is stressful, but it's all mine, right? Yep. I hear that. That's all. I that's, hear that. I mean, that's, that's what you knew, didn't Nicole? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That I'm is still what I do. for the man, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, like, I was commuting, like, 40 minutes each way. My kids mm -hmm. were young. I was paying nannies to take care of them. I'm like, mm -hmm. hard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um. So one of the other recent blogs that you did too, because we too are really tired of hearing about the seed oil crap. Um, oh. We, I know. So, and we, we did post that on our um, Facebook page too. Also just to sort of like introduce and say, Hey, you're coming back. 
Um, but I just thought your your blog was really timely because it's like, you know, we all are hearing this stuff at the same time, you know? Yeah. And so anyway, you did a great blog on it and you really, you broke everything down so nicely. Um, but do you want to talk about that a little bit more or just should we all talk about that a little bit more? It's just, it's yeah. such a strange trend. I don't even know where it started coming from the to tell you the truth. Like the anti-seed oil? Yeah. This is the, the seed oil thing is the perfect example of how something gets blown out of proportion and um, and how people focus on the wrong thing. So seed oils, people say, well, they're really processed and it's um, industrial oil, lubricant, whatever. <laughs> and, you know, and when you take seed oils out of your diet, you become healthier. So that's like the crux of the matter. Like you right. shouldn't be eating them. They're inflammatory, whatever. But the research overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly says that when you replace saturated fats with polyunsaturated fats like seed oils, you have better health outcomes. Yep. Right? All day long. And That's all day long. Also says that seed oils, polyunsaturated fats are likely to be anti-inflammatory. So absolutely. What the hell? So, okay. Um, and, and what I say to people is, listen, you know, like all of that is bullshit. The people who are telling you this don't understand the research. And when people take, nobody eats seed oils on their own. So you, nobody's going to drink a glass of canola oil. No. Where people get a lot of seed oils is in ultra processed food. So if you're taking seed oils out of your diet, you're going to probably stop eating a lot of ultra processed food as Correct. well. Crackers and like chips and all this stuff. And of course, your health markers are going to improve because you're not eating a lot of ultra processed food. Right. And so, it, it, but people are mistaking that for the yes. seed oil. Like, how are you yes. actually pinpointing seed oils for this right. versus just like your overall qu diet quality, right? Correct. So if you take seed oils and, out of your diet, like, but this is the perfect example of how mm -hmm. people just miss the point, right? It's completely. Like, you're so like, like pinpoint seed oils, but you're like taking out all this like fiber free, like freaking right. refined shit out of your diet. Yeah. What do you expect? So like people are choosing to learn, like, I, I guess what kills me is like, aren't we using oils based on smoke points and like, what's an appropriate right. oil so for when we cook with them? Yes. For yes. like, based, right. do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah I, I guess I never thought of oil as like, well, this one's healthier than this one. No, they all serve a purpose based on what you're doing. That's and how right. much oil are you eating? I know. Like in, right. my pantry, in my pantry, I have olive oil. I have canola oil. I have mm -hmm. live butter. Um, mm -hmm. I have coconut oil. And I use yeah. all of them because a healthy yeah. diet has a variety of fats with the exception of trans fats, of course. Right. Um, but your canola, your seed oils aren't rancid. Like when they're no. on the shelf, that is such bullshit. And the no. fact that people say, well, it becomes rancid when you cook with it. Well, unless you have an industrial fryer and you're- Yeah, that's it, so bizarre. Yeah, Again and again and again and again, which basically nobody does at home. No, I would hope not. I would you hope know, like a kernel of truth wrapped in all of this bullshit. Right. And people are like, oh, that sounds scientific. I think I'll believe it. And it's, and it, it, the more people who say it and the more followers those people have, the more they're going to be. Therefore, believed. the belief is there. I'm right. just so, just, I mean, I know vegetable oil gets a really bad rap and even oh. canola oil yes. before all of this can get a bad rap. Yeah. And obviously we know palm oils are, are, are not necessarily great for other environmental reasons, right. but like, right. Where canola, like the, these serve. I know. I just, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still like, what it's are so you crazy. cooking with them? Like, what are people choosing to cook with? Avocado right. oil and it's so expensive. Yes. Yeah, it is. So go expensive. back to your elitist comments. Right. But it doesn't even matter. Like, I don't give a shit. I can afford an avocado oil, but I don't buy it because I don't give a shit. I'm <laughs> right. not going to. First of all, canola oil is like Canadian, so I'm mm -hmm. gonna support it's, my. It's so gonna be true. And it's so <laughs> You're gonna represent. Awesome. And again, like, are you are you fucking deep frying every single thing that goes into your right. mouth? Right. Like, a glass of canola oil. Are you like oh. throwing it all over your food? Right. So, like, 
Why are you so worried? You know, this is the thing, okay? If, if, if listeners, if you take only one thing from this podcast episode from me, let it be this. Get the fucking basics down first before you start picking at the little shit. It's mm-hmm. so true. Do you eat enough fruit and vegetables. Do you eat enough whole grains? Are yeah. your meals protein and fiber rich? Are you eating too much sugar? Are you like so concerned about toxic seed oils, but you fucking drink alcohol, which is actually a toxin? Like right. you don't have the basics down. Nine out of ten of us don't get enough fruits and vegetables right and people don't have the basic stuff but they're like diving into the minutiae you know mm-hmm. like yeah no well it's a way to avoid it's right of course right. Right. basics aren't sexy but mm-hmm. there's nothing sexy about fiber there's right. nothing sexy about me telling you to eat an apple there's something right. very sexy about me telling you to fast for three days and uh-huh. eat a keto diet for your meno belly Right. <laughs> or instead oh of eating gosh. an avocado, you go and buy avocado oil. And now I get to say I can afford this. And I'm, you know, I sure. Yeah. And it's oh, look at my Aragon smoothie. You yeah. know, like you, like I'm not right. buying a $17 smoothie. Oh my gosh, like, no. You know, but it's like this culture of like, look mm-hmm. what I can buy. It was the same with the celery juice, right? Yeah. Totally. Oh gosh. Yeah. Medical I know. Medium, like, he, he totally invented the concept of cluster yep. salt and all of this yep. stuff. And, and and the reason why people maybe felt better with celery juice is because they removed other shit from their diet, sure. but uh, which is the same as like the carnivore diet. It's like elimination, yeah. right? but it's not the celery juice, but the people were bragging, I think, because celery juice was so expensive when they would mm. buy it. And it's like a thing. It's a flex, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. It's not a fucking flex. You know why? Because this is a not what wellness looks like. This is right. what it looks like. Health and wellness are the basics, mm-hmm. not the fucking thirty dollar, right? You know, the trend, whatever came from, like you know, the deep cold waters of Greenland, like that right. Mark Truman tells you you need to have or whatever, right? Right. And like fistfuls of supplements. Oh, I don't eat processed uh, processed food, but here's my protein powder. Here's right. my supplement. Which you know, is processed. Oh, yes. Processed. Okay. I am like oh. right now. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, I'm glad we got you going. Get it out, girl. I was wondering mm-hmm. what you did for stress relief. Maybe this is one of them. <laughs> I have a Peloton treadmill and a bike and I freaking use it. Well, actually not the bike so much anymore, <laughs> but the treadmill I do use. I like, I don't know how I would deal with stress if I couldn't exercise. Oh um, gosh. Yeah. It's always been like that for me. You know? Where are the other dietitians yeah, agreed. getting, you know, where, where are the other professionals in our field and why aren't they getting upset at the AND or. Oh, I agree. And like. Hey, there's tons of dietitians who are pissed off at them who are not renewing their memberships. Well, not renewing mm. their memberships or anything. And the A&D is sitting there like, well, I don't understand. And, you know, but they've, I don't know, Abby, if you saw this or if you've done any more research on this, Nicole and I chit chat about this off offline quite often is the food is medicine oh, uh, no. rhetoric. Oh, that see, good. The see, oh, good. We're all in agreement. Not the right wording. I wrote up not the right wording. I should republish it. It's called um, "Food is Not Medicine." I think. <laughs> yeah, that and that's right. You're that's correct. More blunt than that. <laughs> correct. But it's not. There's no other thing. Also, like people are being convinced <laughs> by certain influencers <laughs> and doctors that and they the academy forego conventional treatment in favor of alternative treatments you know and and cancer is just the beginning like right you know, it's all of all of the all the things like right. um especially you know what people with mental health issues like you know you don't need antidepressants you just need to change your diet go fuck yourself mm-hmm. yes because yeah. the, yes i can swear you need an antidepressant yes mm-hmm. oh um, we, we clearly like, have been people can die <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like that is, and, yes. and oh, let me fix your trauma. Okay, you're not mm-hmm. fucking qualified. Like, why are mm-hmm. who are these people? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's not necessarily a diet thing, but you know, like the 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 anxiety and depression stuff. I call them out because, and it makes me so. I don't think anything really enrages me as much as that. Besides the cancer people who are like, you can fix mm-hmm. your cancer. 
with your Debbie, with I, I had a patient uh, and I work in behavioral health. I had a patient who was from New York who had horrific OCD and anxiety. And he was, he had now come to our facility, but prior to, he was working with a doctor at the doctor's clinic um, where in order to cure OCD, you become Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gluten-free, dairy-free. The guy's got a book. The guy's got Mm -hmm. like supplement lines. I was horrified. Oh my God. I would, if you sent me something on Instagram, I would- I would take him. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to look again. I know we mm-hmm. talked about this guy on a different podcast, Nicole, but I'm going to have yeah. to go back and like, got him. you got him. You didn't mention his name. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I was horrified. And like to try to get this patient who now had a significant eating disorder because yeah. he's now limited and his brain's not working because he's not eating yeah. half the things. Well, medical medium tells people too, right? Right. Drink a smoothie and you'll detox from your mythical heavy metals and your right. Epstein bar and like, you know, cure your autism. Like, why are you doing this to parents? Why are you doing right. this? To- right. Yes. No, you're taking advantage. I don't know how he is not in jail. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of people who should be in jail for but this. Th- that's exactly right, though. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah, it's... It's horrifying what's out there. And the the concept of our academy taking on the food is medicine or it's either food is medicine or food, or food as ads. medicine. Mm-hmm. Is, Are they, so what's going on? See, I'm Canadian. If you go to the Andy website, they are they now have literature on like how they are adapting the food is or as medicine um, like platform as one of like their promotional things that they're going to do. And it's turning up in classrooms for dietetic students and, and they're coining it as this is a preventative, this is prevention. That's not prevention. It's not prevention. Medicine medicine is for sickness. Right. That's not preventative. No. Right. 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 But my, my problem too, is that they've taken a slogan from a book from 10, 15 years ago, and we couldn't have come up with something right. else that fits and is actually for all people and yeah. isn't, you know what I mean? Like, right. well, and-, <clears throat> and here's the thing. So I just, I just pulled it up and it just says the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics defines food as medicine right. as a philosophy that uses food and nutrition to support health and wellness. Again, can't we find a different what even slogan yeah. for that? The support is so vague. But yeah. this is this huge movement that within our profession and other professionals who are not crazy, let's call it, and influencers and people who are not spewing misinformation, they are actually adapting this concept of food as right. medicine and really like, yeah, okay, this is great. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. This is yeah, not great. This is it's so not great at all. No, it's right. not great at all. And then we'll be called, you know, big pharma shells. Yeah. But the right. the most fucked up part about it is like all these people who reject conventional medicine and talk shit about, you know, big pharma and doctors and, yeah. and, and vaccines and all of the stuff. It, uh, they'll be a lot, what are they going to do if they get cancer? What are they going to do if they need a doctor? They're going to go and be treated by mm-hmm. the people they talk shit about mm-hmm. which i find so absolutely fucking disgusting if you're gonna mm-hmm. talk shit about doctors you know then don't use a doctor when you need one then yeah do something else like yes it's just it's so people are just i don't know they're so confused and and angry you know mm-hmm. i'm not angry here but like i'm angry about the angry people <laughs> <laughs> yeah is it's, it's de- it, at the end of the day it's like super dangerous that narrative about like don't feed into big pharma and they just want to make money from you meanwhile like the integrative people are making money off of correct it's, but it's, and, it's and you really can't even use insurance terrible. for the integrative stuff right terrible. <sighs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad we got that all out that was a good one to get out for me yeah. at the very least we've been avoiding <laughs> having a pod- podcast on food is medicine because i just can't 
I don't know how, which direction I can go without just making it a very angry podcast. I think well, it's the verbiage though. Like, it is the verbiage. That's the whole problem. Supports medical care. Like, absolutely. Right. If you have cancer, go for conventional treatment, not smoothies. But in addition, you know, the food part is important. Absolutely. Right. But it's, yeah. it's a matter of with and instead or instead. Mm-hmm. Right? right. And right. I think yep. that's the verbiage here. It's like mm-hmm. it's implying food as medicine is implying that instead of actual conventional medicine, you should be just eating blueberries food. and beets and the yeah. things with color and fiber. And that's fiber does not fix your anything. The autoimmune disease. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't fix it. Right. Well, and there is, um, and again, I'm not going to call it out only because I don't know the precise um, name of of this institute. Um, I think it's in the Chicago area, but there is a terrible story of an example. Do you know what I'm talking about, Annie? Mm -hmm. Because, well, well, I know the institution most likely. Okay. So the the thing is, is that um, there was a situation and this makes me incredibly angry for some other reasons, but there was a physician that was working with a, with a, with a gal diagnosed her with cancer. This physician is also traditional, traditionally based and also functionally based. And she said, here are our options. However, I highly recommend that you go and you actually get treated at a real cancer facility. Like we are not going to be able to, to, you know, like the, the, here's my limitation. This is where I can go. You actually need more. The individual chose not to take this person's advice, okay. went and decided to spend $10,000 a day by mm-hmm. eating food only to cure her cancer. $10,000 a day? For three days. They told her three days. The woman came back and she passed away two weeks later because she chose not mm. to go and get actual care for her cancer. I mean, at the end of the day, this person is an adult. They made their own decision. And that, you know, it may have been a decision that we wouldn't do or agree Mm -hmm. with or whatever, but we have to let people make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, But they need to have all of the relevant information. Like, I don't know. My point is that this is how big of a problem, this is a problem. Yeah, I don't understand. In these places are getting away with this. Yeah, I'd send, love to find that again. Send yeah. Me the mm-hmm. link. When did this happen? Uh, this happened to this woman last year, I want to say. Okay. So, can you send me the info? Because I really want to do something. Isn't better. that something? Mm-hmm. It's terrible. It's terrible. I mean, people have autonomy. They, you know, mm-hmm. they make their choices. However, it's a big um, example of, of the amount of misinformation is out there. Right. And that's why I told that story, just because it kind of pulls it all together of like, you guys, it is a problem. This is a problem. Oh, it's a problem. Let's For start sure believing problem. this, whatever. I don't know what people are trying to reach for, but it's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. That's because people are told the chemo is toxic, blah, blah, blah. But like, oh my God, it has to be toxic. Correct. Mm-hmm. Let it be toxic. Right. Yeah, right. do you know how many people people's lives have been saved because of that? Like, right? What is right. wrong with people? I mean, I I had a a coworker whose best friend, their parents were they didn't believe in chemo again that whole toxic concept. Mm-hmm. I mean, he died at twenty five because parents yeah. were like, nope, we're not no treat. Nope, she's mm. you know she's still her parents' after? insurance, and she passed. You know, was like she, just, like were were the parents upset after the were they well they were there was a religious belief in there as well so it was mm. kind of like an acceptance of like well it's okay because it's she's God's will. in a better place and oh. you know so there was that coupled with this toxicity feature and it was Ooh. just like she she's at 25 lived. yeah at 25 yeah, I probably would have gave it a go <laughs> yeah at 25 are you not able to make that decision by yourself now when you're well I suppose if you're on your parents insurance it's you know it's oh, little, sorry like, tricky I would have just I would have just yeah I, tricky yeah. Mm-hmm. Is, Oof. is chemo not covered by nothing is covered <laughs> I mean it is sure, you need but... chemo you don't have to pay for it like you don't right. have to pay for most things here. like we pay through our taxes our taxes are huge but like I guess right, which that's... is wonderful 
I'm wondering, like, that's so sad. There, there must know. be a lot of people not getting necessary treatment because they can't pay for it. There's a lot yeah. of people. I mean, I just yeah. had to work with a patient on his diet because he was defending his sister in a fight. And mm -hmm. so he lost his teeth and he can't oh. afford to see a dentist. So now mm -hmm. he has no teeth. And he's losing a ton of weight because he can't yeah. figure out how to, you know, mechanically soft and, you know, how to eat and all the things. And That's so sweet. mental health is derailed and he still he can't afford a dentist. Yeah. Oh, Dental gosh. is not covered here in, in many cases, but we just instituted like a low cost dental program. Mm -hmm. in so nice. yeah, it's a different, <clears throat> it's a so different system and a lot of, I, I don't want to get into like political stuff, but it is, sure. I've lived in the U S and in Canada. Mm. I a hundred percent believe that like Canadian stuff that's, it's so it's better. <laughs> it's, it's better. So, you can it's just so, say it. It's better. It's so much better. Yeah. Like, honestly, and people in the U S don't understand. They're like all, you know, Canadian, like there's wait, huge wait times. Right. People die waiting for not really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our major center is like, if you, if I need to, a, I fell and had a like friggin brain bleed I'd be in surgery like today mm -hmm. right you know but if I need yeah, that have to be scheduled out I have to like <laughs> yeah we have to schedule that out we have to schedule that out right <laughs> we're gonna put you on ice You'd have, and then we're gonna for it, right <laughs> yeah. like yeah. even when I had my my kids like I didn't like my whole pregnancy everything was I was a high-risk pregnancy I had like ultrasound after ultrasound after blood test like all of that I had my kids two C sections, but one for each one, and like I didn't see a bill. But in the U.S., that would have been great. oh, that would have been astronomical, great. huge. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah. it sucks, and, and there's enough. a lot of people <laughs> without health care. So when you t yeah. again, you take on this food as medicine as prevention, and you yeah. couple that with people who are low income and don't have health care, they grab yeah. onto it because they can't afford right. the medicine. But right. I, I feel like a lot of that stuff is also for the worried well. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not sure yes. that income individuals are actually that de the, de the target demographic for food as medicine. I think it's a mm -hmm. lot like worried well, one percenters who can mm -hmm. afford all of They can market. afford medicine and food and everything. All the yeah, things. Yeah. Not, right? yeah. Right. They're coining right. that as it's for inner city communities, but I would Whatever. agree with you. That's such bullshit. That's such yes. bullshit because the food is that they're recommending often is like not organic. obtainable. Yeah, like right. all like all of the things that mm -hmm. low income people, you know, they just need to eat. I mean, yeah. any people besides right. like top income, we're all struggling with groceries right now. Right. Yeah. It's right. so expensive. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, we covered a ton. <laughs> yeah. We were all over the board. <laughs> but this was just great. This is so great, great, Abby. Um, thanks so much for being here. And I think uh, we asked you this the last time. We ask all of our guests um, all the time. What's your favorite food right now? Um, oh, my God. What is my favorite food? My favorite food is probably coconut cake. I probably said that last time too. That's awesome. Um, I love coconut and I love coconut cake and my birthday. Do you cake. order yours or do you make yours? Because okay. I know there's a plate. Yeah. Where is the place? I, I, I can't remember what it was called, but I know there's like a place. Gold belly. Is it like. Might be. Um, usually I'm in Florida for my birthday, so we get it at Publix. Oh, nice. Oh, oh okay, nice. cool. Just standard. <laughs> Publix is like the happiest yeah. place on earth. I love oh, it. It's great. Um, I like that. It's the greatest, but, um, yeah, no, I usually buy it. I, I'm not going to make a birth a, a coconut cake. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I think I did That's once hard. and I'll never do it again. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. It's a ton of work. One, one for my birthday and it took her so long. Terrible. I know. Yeah. So then when pretty cakes are really expensive, I'm like, yes, I will pay for that because I might my actually time is really important. this year because yeah. it's, uh, you know, they're, they started to deliver to Canada and there's a couple of coconut cakes on there that look amazing. So I think that's, that's awesome. going to be okay. very fun. Very fun. Well, thank you for sharing. So great. 
And we'll put all of your information into our show notes. So yeah. if people wish to reach out or and or follow, they can do that. So thanks again, Abby, for being here. We so our appreciate pleasure. it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs> Bye. Good to see you again. Bye. Thank you.